Hey folks, we're talking tips, tricks, and strategies to help you grow those big, juicy tomatoes. First thing is you want to make sure you choose the right variety and the right type of tomato for you. Now let's talk about types of tomatoes just a little bit. There's basically three different types. We got determinants, and determinant tomatoes are those that grow to a determinant size, normally between waist high and chest high, somewhere there. And we normally get those off in three different crops. They last about a month. We get a bottom crop, we get a middle crop, and we get a top crop. But they pretty well come in and go out within four weeks. They're over and done with, and we move on. Then you got your indeterminates that grow indeterminately. They grow throughout the summertime and they continue to give you love and give you tomatoes throughout the summertime. And then the third one we have is these dwarf tomatoes here. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on these dwarf tomatoes. Heck, that's another video, but these are wonderful for you guys that's just got patios and balconies. You also need to make sure that you choose the right variety for your location. You know, we have to grow hybrids down here in the south because we have so much disease pressure. And we know that to be successful, we grow these hybrids because they are so better off than the OPs, the open pollinated and the heirlooms. Now, I love the heirlooms as much as anybody. I just can't successfully grow them where I live. So I have to grow these hybrids. Now, the hybrids have gotten a lot better over the years. Years ago, they didn't taste well at all. But the breeders have bred the taste back into them. So now we've got the best of both worlds. We've got a good tomato to eat, which is important. And yet we've got a good disease package so we can grow a nice, healthy plant. Make sure that you're working with a good quality seed. Some of the diseases out there, like anthracnose, is a seed-borne disease. And you could be getting seeds that's contaminated unless you're getting good seeds from a trusted source that's been tested. Now, tomatoes are just prone to disease. That's the way it is. So you want to make sure that you rotate, rotate, rotate. I can't preach it enough. You got to make sure that you don't plant your uh, tomatoes back in the same place every year. You want to follow corn, beans, or cabbage, something in the brassica family, that's fine. But that helps keep your disease out of your tomatoes. Bacteria wilt, uh, late blight, early blight, all those are soil-borne diseases and rotation is going to help you dramatically reduce those diseases in your tomatoes. Always make sure you get between a 6 and a 7.0 pH. Make sure your soil is nice and balanced with the mineral load. Another thing too, add as much good, rich compost as you possibly can. Make sure you check your soil test and your mineral load is balanced. If you don't need phosphorus, don't apply phosphorus. Now, tomatoes love calcium, and that helps keep that blossom and rot at bay. They're also heavy feeders. Always plant your tomatoes on high ground. Never plant them in the bottom where they're going to stay wet all the time. Also, I like to heal mine up, as you see right here. You now, we had a bad, bad windstorm yesterday, and they was getting blown around. And this healing technique here keeps them from getting damaged in those high winds. Another great tool for growing tomatoes is drip irrigation. There's a couple of reasons why. You're putting that water underneath the plant and you're keeping it off the leaves. Therefore, you're taking the disease pressure away from that plant by keeping that leaf dry. You're also conserving water, which we know this day and time is a big thing. But also, you get to move your calcium. You can inject your calcium nitrate into your drip system. Now, calcium is moved by water. So you got the best of both worlds. If you're putting calcium in with water, that gets it up through that plant into that fruit to help keep that blossom in rot at bay. Now, if you're gonna to grow tomatoes, you can anticipate having some pest problems, disease and insect. So you gotta be ahead of the game on this. Just a few of the products that we got. I was gonna mention these to you and what they can do for you. We've got liquid cop here. That's a good fungicide. Works great for your foliar diseases. We've got a complete disease control. And this one, my favorite way to use this one is as a drench. And this beneficial bacteria colonizes on the root system of the tomato plants and helps fight off any soil-borne diseases. Then we've got Bug Buster 2. This is one you want to go to if your uh, stink bugs get out of hand or if any insects get out of hand. This is the one you want to go to right here. And then we got Monterey BT here that's going to work good on those hornworms. 
is where it gets a little confusing, whether to prune or not to prune, whether to sucker or not to sucker. Now these right here are determinate type tomatoes. And I normally like to prune all my tomatoes at the very bottom to keep that foliage from touching the, uh, the soil. So I kind of clip them off. And I like to clip them as close to the stem with clippers as much as I can to get a nice clean cut. Now you see that right there? Right there, that's the sucker. That's where the suckers come up with that. On determinate type tomatoes, I only sucker the very bottom if I sucker any at all because I need all the foliage I can get to prevent my tomatoes from getting sun scald. Now these cicada varieties that we sell a lot of are known for having dense foliage and that helps. But sucker and determinate type tomatoes is not something that you have to do. You can sucker them up to the uh, third or fourth node if you'd like to, or just don't sucker them at all. You're still going to make a nice sized tomato. Mm -hmm. To sucker these tomatoes, I'm just simply going to reach in there, pull on that just a little bit, it kind of breaks right off. And that's the way you sucker a tomato. Now this is an indeterminate type of tomato right here. This is a big beef that we like to grow. So this one right here really doesn't need any pruning, doesn't have any lower limbs that's touching the soil there. But these indeterminates need suckering all throughout their life. You see there, there's the sucker right there and I'm gonna pull it right off there. The smaller the sucker it is, the easier it is to remove. There's another one, I'm gonna take it out. If you don't sucker these indeterminates, you're going to end up with small tomatoes because a lot of energy goes into those suckers. So it's important that you do that. So there you have the difference in indeterminate and determinate tomatoes and how to or how not to sucker or prune each one.